Get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You, ABQ. Oh, that's right. It's all about UABQ. Now, the goal of the show is to highlight the best of our city's industry experts in real estate, culture, lifestyle, so that you walk away with some value and feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do that is to answer the questions you may have or interview the guests that you want to see. So we invite you to join the conversation. You can reach out, follow our hashtag up here, or join our email list to get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. Hey, I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. Whoa, didn't see you there. Grant Harvey, Vision Mortgage, home loan expert. Now you probably <laughs> remember Grant as the head coach of the University of New Mexico men's Lobo hockey team. Now he's crushing it in interior design and yeah. the mortgage game. Carpet match the drapes, yeah. <laughs> uh, you may have seen Skip on HGTV's House Hunters and he's part of the top 2% producing real estate agents in the city. Now you're probably noticing a change in the set <laughs> uh, as season three continues. We're empowering women apparently and now we're kind of leaning a little bit towards the pink side. Yeah, well, we're, you know, we're beaming. The set's <laughs> beaming. Look at the background, uh, the, that's beaming. The carpet does match the carpet, the <laughs> drapes on this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, here we Here's go. why you're gonna wanna stay tuned. We're joined in studio by Ryan Laughlin, who's relocated out oh let's join let's look at our carpet here pinky pinky uh, but here's why you're going to want to stay tuned we're joined by ryan laughlin who's relocated out to the desert of new mexico from the mean winters of minneapolis new minneapolis yeah and so he's a certified storyteller here locally we're going to sit down with him and kind of get his backstory and talk hockey and, and all things albuquerque yeah it always, it always goes back to hockey um let's talk about our weekends what did you do uh, what day is it today? God, I don't even know. Oh, you know, the, the saga continues just buying real estate. Um, we yeah, got, here you go. We got, <laughs> Monopoly, got undercover. Man. We, got a new, we got the new roof put on, but yeah. we're moving ahead. We're, yeah. you know, did some furniture shopping. So to speak to the new furniture shopping, the new American Home Furnishings took over their new location on Carlisle next to the brand new Whole Foods. I saw that. That whole shopping center is amazing. I mean, the way that they have it set up now, it's 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 nice to see some life in there because it hasn't been anything since it was that Kmart. Kmart. That when Kmart, I was like eight that, years that old, there was Burger a Burger King where people would just be shot. Yeah, but now it's revamped, and so that, that the new furniture store is very nice, man. They got some cool shit in there. Well, so what did you? I mean, how many pieces did you get? Not bragging. We got a couch the size of this whole stage. I don't know how we're gonna move it or whatever, but um, should be should be fun. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. good. I'm I'm proud of you. My <laughs> I got a new couch, and it looks like I run a daycare now. So. Toddlers, see you soon. Um, let's talk about um, allergies and the, the weather, right? And, and I'm not a weather guy, I'm not 82 years old, and it's a senior citizen thing, but let's talk about how annoying spring is here. Love the city, but we basically have th uh, four seasons, fall, winter, wind, and summer. Um, and one thing I invite you guys to do that I'm giving you unsolicited uh, allergy advice is uh, I told you you could go to the city and sign up for their email. Uh, Mark, go ahead and put uh, the pollen count for yesterday. All right, so you can kind of monitor um, what's going on in the city and whether you need to stay indoors, but be aware of what agitates you. Um, the, the east side always takes off before the west side does for pollen, and then it gets done and the west side becomes more severe. So just, if you wanna take a, take a look outside or you wanna go look at your email, that'd be a good way to you know predicate your day and figure out what you're up against and, and, and maybe get that allergy pill in you quicker. Um, one other piece of allergy advice is they do sell honey, and back to our prior guest, Scott Jeter, um, you can get honey that's specific to a zip code and then that would kind of uh, almost look like a, 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 an anti-venom, if you will. Uh, it helps treat the, your allergies per that zip code. So it's, it's, it's localized honey and um, we can give you a link or you can email us how to get that. So. Well, speaking of past guests, you know, we had the owners of Revel right. on the show and, and what a killer venue, but you've spent a lot of time there. I know you've hosted events there, but you've spent a lot of time there going to shows. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your most recent event. Yeah, well, let's go back to, they have they have kind of a banquet hall that's for rent too, and, and it, it seats like 250 people, and it's a great little venue that's stepped and, and tiered, and um, I, I threw a, a Lifetime Achievement Award for my dad over there. Um, but recently they had Excision. EDM heads know who he is. If you don't, great light show. They're known for that. Look at that. 
Skip would have a seizure here, <laughs> but look at that. Look at that show. I mean, Revel is such an impressive venue. This is so aggressive. You stool. Yeah. How high were you jumping? Yeah, <laughs> I, I am known for my uh, jumping when I get too excited. And then let's, let's go ahead and I think there's some guy dancing there we caught uh, a video <laughs> of. I don't. Jumping? Yeah. No, I don't know what it was. I, 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 I got to meet that guy after. Mark, uh, yeah, who, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, it's a party bear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah party bears in the wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that guy looks like a real rascal. He's really got it together. Yeah, he should make him a host. Right here. Um, yeah, so one other thing I want to talk about is, uh, <laughs> it was a sad story. Um, my Pomeranians tend to blow over when it's too windy. And let's get a, let's get a look at poor Dasha. Um, suffered from, uh, yeah, from a... Poor thing, right? Just tipped over. I don't have footage of her tipping over. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, she gets sucked up in a tornado. But I think Animal Humane Society may take her away from it. If I show that video, they may think that... Uh, it's like all the reason to keep them trimmed so they don't fly away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other thing with dogs, back to allergies, is you need to wash them quite a bit because they're big, big, like, I don't know, cotton swabs just taking all the pollen and it's circulating in your house. So you may want to wash them often. And again, like I said, wash your hair before you go to bed. You don't want to take those allergens and pollen with you to bed. Okay, feel well, good. <laughs> I just became a doctor. <laughs> yeah, a doctor, lawyer, <laughs> yeah. animal and advocate. I, I mortgage broker. <laughs> Broca minute. Do we have any other? Did, Let me ask other... you this. Let me ask you this. Go what ahead. was your What was your review after the the home show? You had a chance to walk through the yeah. House. Dang, I should have took a video. Um, I personally, I liked the way it was laid out. What they did is they structured the inside to where it looked like 361 square feet. It seemingly seems too small, but I went inside physically and, and I thought it was impressive. There was quite a bit of room. They partitioned it correctly to where you had your, you know, small bedroom quarters and then, and then your living room. But I, I think it's a lot of room and I think it's a viable tool and I had to see it myself, but I, I plan on getting one of those. Yeah, I liked it that much. Well, that's great. And I think the process is, is easy enough in the fact that it's, you know, you don't have to deal with getting the permits for the city. They'll do all that stuff. Yeah, you. yeah. Um, well, that's good, man. That's good. Um, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. We're joined in studio by Ryan Laughlin. Moved here. He's a hockey player. He's a goalie, so he's got to have something loose upstairs. We're going to learn a little yeah. bit more about his backstory, but talk a little bit more about um, crypto, mortgage rates, getting qualified for financing. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the pitfalls that we got to worry about? You here? know what? I'm glad you said that. Let's kind of do something improv, but let's, do, let's start our mortgage minute. So well, I'm going to talk about closing costs, cash to close, and let's tie in crypto. You know, crypto's taken off recently, and, and it might be a viable way for people to use for down payment and such, but we'll, we'll touch on that in just a bit. When you are shopping for rates and you get your fee worksheet, which is the most accurate way to display and convey fees and costs, it's important to do the comparison on the same day that the other guys were providing, right? So if you're looking shopping rates and shopping costs, make sure the date matches up because that is a apples to apples comparison. I'll also tell you the only way that uh, fee worksheets can deviate is in Schedule A. Schedule A talks about origination, processing, and underwriting. These are fees you can shop for. The rest of the fees are kind of set in stone and it doesn't matter who you use. Those are what I would probably call a constant. I would call Schedule A of the variables and those things can budge between uh, uh, brokers and of course rate. Um, now let's get into cryptocurrency. That is a tricky one to count for down payment. A lot of lenders don't use it. It's important to almost cash that crypto out and put it in your bank account and have a seasoning, seasoning meaning how long it's been in your account for 60 days. After 60 days, underwriters can't go back and figure out where the paper trail came from. It looks like it's your money. So if you, if you, if you wanna do something preemptively with your crypto and you wanna use it, cash it out, have it sit in your bank account for 60 days and then, and then you're safe. So um, that's your mortgage minute. A gentleman who's going to prequal today, and that's kind of one of his big holdings, is stock market and crypto. So yeah. well, it's good good info to know. Stock market, actually, I'll add to this too. That, um, if you have mutual funds and such, um, they just don't want the last quarter. And again, when, when you ever transfer money, they want to see it actually depart, right? So you have to take the original uh, bank account or the, the stock holdings, show it, 
and then show the departure and then show the reception of the money. So it's quite tedious and that's due to the Patriot Act that should have gone away a long time ago. Well, I'm a true patriot and we'll dive a little bit more into patriotism <laughs> and, and finding the New England and finding Bill Belichick terrorists. will be on the show tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, we're joined by Ryan Laughlin in studio, certified storyteller here locally. And also stay tuned to the end of the show. I can't believe we didn't even mention this at the top the of the rug? hour. The rug, rug? Rug repair? The rug needs no mentioning. But stay tuned to this, to the end of the show. Everybody's favorite, Skip's Tips. And this carpentry. is the UABQ. Wall to wall. We're back. Welcome back to UABQ. I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. That's true. Grand Harvey Vision Mortgage. Also true. Yeah. We're joined in studio today by Ryan Laughlin. Almost six years ago, he moved to New Mexico to get out of the hellacious winters of Minnesota to explore the Sandia Mountains and to keep playing hockey and grow as a journalist here at KOB. Celebrity status. We uh, like KOB. Yeah, big fans. Ryan, right. welcome Channel to the Forest show, man. As well. Thanks, guys. It's good to be here. I yeah. love, let's talk about your suit, man. This, you've got some good color going on. We're a colorful, uh, colorful program here. Yeah, colorful group. I'm actually shooting something today for a story I'm working on tonight on yeah. KOB4. Uh, it should be a good one. So I uh, put the put the suit on today. I we got it. you a rug match. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. brought I in a rug. Say, we said, we said hey, send nice. a picture. We'll get you a rug to match up. We're, we if you need it. to take the rug with you for your segment, just drape it over your shoulder for the new story. Uh, Ryan, what I like about you, man, is, you know, I spent some time in Minnesota, and that's where you grew up. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, talk about, a little bit about you went to school out there, and then how in the heck did you end up here in the desert? Well, I was a Midwest guy, uh, grew up in Minnesota, uh, went to college at University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire because it was more affordable. I mean, you had in-state reciprocity with Wisconsin, and I wanted to pursue journalism, and I wanted to keep playing hockey. Good. And uh, checked both those boxes in Eau Claire, followed my now wife to North Dakota, where she went to grad school. Smokes. Um, good hockey up there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, my journalism career really started there. And then we were ready to get out of the winters and try something new. And I, I started talking to some people in, in the industry, and they said, well, what do you think about New Mexico? <laughs> And I went, what is New Mexico? I went, what is in New Mexico? I, I, I thought it become a state yet? <laughs> yeah. I, I knew it was a state. I, I had no idea what what it looked like. Yeah. Um, like I was envisioning that it was this flat desert, you know, right. wasteland, right? And that's what I think a lot of people from the Midwest, um, you know, they call those the flyover states, and you know, you got the coastal elites that don't yeah. know anything about you. you. Know, let me stop the Midwest to us and let's talk about that. I was under the, the you know, there's a misconception or, or there the people in Wisconsin and Minnesota go, yeah, Kansas, I guess they're Midwest, but that's not really Midwest. I have, a, I have a, a fella that coaches the UNM now that was one of my players and he goes, that's not, those aren't Midwest, like we're Midwest. So there's a, there is a kind of, don't you feel that, that what the Midwest was kind of like a Kansas, Oklahoma yeah, type of thing? Of course, right in the middle. But they, they, they hate that. They don't want to be, you know, there's a. Yeah, there's some lines depending on where you live, <laughs> yeah. territorially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, whatever. keep going with your story. Well, uh, we flew here. Uh, uh, KOB was great enough. They flew me and my wife out, and we saw the mountains, and we kind of fell in love with the place. Um, KOB was a, a great shop, is a great shop, and, uh, you know, I've been able to pursue. My passion and careers here keep playing hockey. Yeah. My wife started her career in healthcare at Presbyterian, and we've both been growing. And uh, you know, now we, I can say that we're we've recommitted here. I'm moving into a new role as an investigative reporter at KOB. Dropping dropping yeah, some news. Here. Wait a yeah, you heard it here first. That's right. Oh, sorry. Oh, let's look at here. This is oh. an example of why you probably fell in love. Absolutely. Right? That's my dog Roxy and my wife, and we're there in the East Mountains. That's Cedro Peak, looking on the backside of Sandia. So I cool. didn't. Put that, that's news to me. I have never been able to rollerblade up you there. Probably, probably, probably recognize those guys. Uh, I, I think Steve Stucker won the, like the most like infamous or, or what yeah, is it? well that's known. Him? That's Steve Stucker and, and Daniel Tedesco in the middle there. Okay. At, 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 we're anchoring Balloon Fiesta. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot year. of pins there. Yeah, yeah. Stucker. Did he pass the metal detector? Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, snowboarding at Red River. If I'm not playing hockey on, in the winter, I'm usually uh, on the slopes and try to see as, as many new places that's, as we can. That's, uh, let's talk about you know the hockey being an underlying. Uh, uh, part of decision making, right? It's part of, I would say, be, not to be dramatic, but it's part of our composition and in our blood. And the fact that you went and continued to play hockey in college was big. And then the next question you go, is there hockey in Albuquerque, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Because that's a huge contingency. And I almost, you know, I'm, I'm a goaltender. And so, the, you know, the goalie pads, they call pillows. I, <laughs> I almost left the pillows at home because yeah. I'm like, 
there's no way there's hockey in <laughs> that New Mexico. That would have been too bad, right? Yeah. yeah, and I was pleasantly surprised with the uh, small but tight-knit hockey community that's here and sort of growing up by the outpost in the northeast part of town. That's where I met Grant hollering at people in all sorts of different ways. And Yeah, I brought him out to an adult league, or not adult league, I brought him out to Lobo League where, you know, Lobos play each other, and I'm like, this guy's a pretty good goalie. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep calling it back every uh, every week. But I think the main uh, mainstay of hockey is – when you see another hockey player, you go, all right, that's my guy. There's no feel, there's no more decision making. There's no application process. You just go, you play hockey? All right. And everything's just left like to the side and you just start hanging out right away. So it's, it's quite an embracing culture. Well, Absolutely. I think hockey is one of those sports, too, where you can't have a big head because you're going to get checked. I mean, you're going <laughs> to yeah. make sure that everybody's in line. Yeah, you know? you it's can, like one yeah. of those, you, you can't be the, the guy with the big britches because they'll bring you back down yeah. to size. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. if everybody can pass through that, yeah. then yeah. you know they're good, they're good people. Right, so let's go. So you got in the uh, KLB what year? Uh, 20, I suppose it was 2018, the summer of 2018. Okay. So I feel like you got uh, more and more liberties as you've started to play prove yourself and, and I think the station really liked him it able it was able to get some good ideas so him, him and I were talking and we kind of worked on a piece to where um, we did a mic'd up segment right and so right before I told Ryan I go hey man just make sure I don't get fired I kind of I kind of lively on the bench and, and stuff and he goes don't worry Grant I, I know what, what what we should put and he had good discretion so let's let's air this whole piece we'll cut our mics off I, I think this is pretty funny Mark Ignition the champion spirit they embody goes back long before the team's record-setting season. And Ryan Laughlin introduces us to the man who will stop at nothing to try and make the high desert a hockey hotbed. He's got to win those puck battles, man. The man behind Lobo Hockey... Dylan, you don't have to pass that! is colorful yeah, right. in more ways than one. I had a dad who just uh, decided to tell me to go for it all the time with fashion. Grant Harvey is known around the rink for his style. Mac, you gonna keep your hair long? Yeah. Okay, don't cut it. The last time you looked like a goofball for six months. I'm known for being booed or cheered for it, and either way, I'm fine with it. Sometimes it's a little loud for people. I, I don't mind being the distraction. A lot of the times I go on the road and people will really razz me, and I go, okay, I'll take the heat. Just don't razz my players. He has been a part of 15 straight winning seasons for the University of New Mexico, first as a player, now as a coach. And you won't find a bigger advocate for his kids. There it is. Look up, look up, look up. There are true 505 players out there, which makes us a true hometown team. 75% of the team grew up, born and bred, Albuquerque, Los Alamos, Taos guys, Santa Fe guys. That, that's what makes this impressive. And you won't find a bigger advocate for the program. Lobo hockey is not an NCAA sport. And while it is affiliated with UNM, they don't have the full funding Division I teams have. So when Harvey is not thinking about coaching, I could tell you were gassed. Normally you'd have that guy's lunch. He's thinking about paying referee dues. It's probably the hardest check I have to write. I'd rather write a check to the IRS. Fundraising, private donors, and some really good players. I told the dude, I love it. Yeah. Have helped propel this team into the national spotlight this year. Hey, don't take your foot off the Not to break your gas, right? Don't take your foot. Don't take your foot off. Please take your foot off the brake. Harvey hopes to keep the momentum rolling. Don't take your foot off the gas. You guys understand that now? And grow the game for future Lobos and beyond. Thanks, guys. Ryan Laughlin, KOB4. What I liked about that is two hockey guys working on this piece, and I think that it took a hockey guy to extract some of the funny moments and, and mainly the range of emotion and kind of captured, like, a lot of people think I was a really stern coach, and I was, but there was a lot of humor on the site, too, to kind of, uh, you know, not, not be so intense. So I, I think I earned some of the, the respect from the players that, that I had some moments of being like nice to them too. And a lot of people didn't see that, but I think he did a great job of telling that story as a fellow hockey player. So. Well, you called it being mic'd up. 
I would call it, you know, it's, it's what I try to do when I storytell. Uh, you know, you say I'm, a, I'm an investigative reporter now, but I, what I really love doing is being there to capture real moments. When guys are not thinking about the camera on them or the mic on them, when you're fully invested in what's going on in front of you, like that's when you capture these real human moments. And if you can weave those together in a story, usually the end product I think will be richer a better story to right. be shared and, yeah. and you could, you weren't thinking about the mic no. when you were <laughs> obviously the edit making some of those got comments. worn out yeah, yeah. Beep, 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 beep. I, I think in, in some candid stuff i i think people get more invested in the story where people are relatable and they see them at these um not maybe pc times or or scripted where you go ah it's having a real moment I, you know like maybe i like that person that they're having moments like i do and not so uh pc or, or, or like posture well and one of the things i think about when i'm i'm writing a story or I'm on a story shoot is like not everybody not not your audience or our audience will know about hockey they maybe not have played hockey maybe have never stepped in an ice arena before right but they probably can relate to your passion human emotion human emotion those things I call like universal truths and I try to always think about what is the universal truth when I'm on this story is it am I concerned about my family or my safety am I concerned about my money my house am I concerned or am I am I enjoying something that I like am I enjoying my family or am I passionate about something so I think you know nothing about hockey I think you could probably relate to the passion that you so appropriately uh, showed there on the uh, the bench. Yeah, but thank you. I I, I call it uh, a mass appeal or, or, or common denominator that, that people could tap into. So yeah, I, I appreciate you running that piece. It was it was creative and, and fun, and no one's ever ran a piece like that. I mean, that's a that's a neat way to learn your coach. Well, but also, I mean, look, you took that that program from the ground up. Nobody even knew we had a hockey team until you came in and. You showcased it, and so now it's off and running. I joke around when I was playing for the Lobos, there was like seven parents we scored were like, because <laughs> you could hear a kazoo every once in a while with a five year that snuck in the game, but it was pretty bad, so yeah. I love that because that was similar to where I was playing hockey at the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. It was a club hockey program. Right. They had a D3 program where some like really, really high level guys were playing. We were guys that wanted to continue playing competitively. They didn't want to play two or three years of juniors and you yeah. know live that life on the road and, and whatever and that was the first team that i made because i was never good enough to like make the really good because high school hockey in minnesota is ridiculous that's life that's life and i was never good enough but i made the eau claire wisconsin team because I was the only goalie that tried out. You know what's crazy <laughs> yeah. about him saying that? He's a wonderful goalie. Like, he's very aggressive. He catches everything and blocks the angle. It's, it, I, would you venture to say you got really good in college, though? Yeah. because You probably it, got peppered sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, but also, like, you are – you, you play to the level of the people around you. Yeah. And that was probably the best guys that I had around me, yeah. and that made you better. And so that was a lot of fun because, you know, the competition was better, you could get better, and it was a rewarding hockey. Okay. So in, in baseball, we call it strapping on the, the tools of ignorance. You call them the pillows. The pillows is like <laughs> What the, does that right? even mean? What are you trying to say? Like <laughs> yeah. the, the catch well, your shit You got to be crazy to sit there and just have <laughs> missiles hit at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're speaking abstract now. If you guys want to do the next cryptic uh, message Skip has, go ahead and uh, go in the back of the cereal box and decode it. What does that even mean? See, again, two now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. You look into the carpet, it'll reveal yeah. itself. Oh, what there is it is. This you know, no, you do know, you stare that thing and it actually is just like Benjamin Franklin. Oh my God, I see it now. Yeah, it's, it's the map of the, I don't know. All right, anyways, Pangea. some of the other cool stories you do. Talk about the heart of New Mexico. This is where you highlight some quirky things about New Mexico. Tell some untold stories about, you know, just interesting things that go on in our state. So the heart of New Mexico is a, a series that I pitched because I was like, man, you know, like, Part, a big part of what news does is supposed to highlight the problems in a place. And New Mexico has a lot of them. It gets and, old real quick. And it can color your lens a little bit about like how you feel about your community. A lot of people, like I talk to, they're like, oh, I don't watch the news. You know, it's, it's all bad news. And I don't blame them. Like, like there's a lot of really serious, really hard things to hear that are going on in our state sometimes. So the heart of New Mexico is designed to show like, we know that there's cool people, unique things, um, awesome stories that should be shared. And so this is a, a designated space for that. And so I, I, I asked people to send me ideas. Um, I've, I've had some really sad and heartwarming stuff. I've had some really goofy, strange stories. Uh, there's a woman in Corrales who has this glass harmonica. And she, it's, this, it's this, you know, like you ever had like a wine glass and put your finger on it and it makes yeah. a noise? Oh, yeah. Well, it's like that with a bunch of different glass bowls that spins. And she says there's only seven of them in the world. 
she's one of 12 people that know how to play them, and she lives in Corrales. Fascinating. So, yeah, and she is a, as interesting as the instrument she plays. I mean, it is a really fascinating story, but it's that type of thing that I'm like, man, this place is weird, bizarre, and special. I like different. That, you know, th yeah. What's great about what you're doing is it kind of changes the perspective about what people expect out of the news, and it's quite refreshing for you to be doing that. So that that's, I give you props for that because it would be easy to prey on uh, blacks, black news and, and like, you know, dark stuff and, and crime. And, um, you know, people like me have actually had that sentiment, like, I don't want to tune on, but that, that would change a lot of people's mind. Let's do two items here. What is the most interesting story you've done period away from sports and let's talk about most interesting sports um figure or story you've done so interesting story that i've done that's not sports related yeah. um well the like the the big one the big news story that i did when i first got here that's now soon to be coming to a conclusion is the the taos compound case uh, yeah. um, this was uh the alert went out on a weekend that there was 11 emaciated kids in this compound um, in Amalia, which is uh, you know a mesa just south yeah. of the Colorado border. Where would you even know where that is? Nothing, yeah. nothing out there. So I was the new guy working on the weekends, and so they sent me. They said, "11 emaciated kids, go up there and go <laughs> figure it out and see see what's up." And we got out there and we found the the real the the rightful landowners, and these they they told us that these people who had set up this compound were on the wrong property. It was like an adjacent property, so they showed us around. And it was a bizarre story with many, many twists and turns that you could fill an hour with. But eventually, these people were charged with the first federal terrorism charges in the whole state of New Mexico. Um, the FBI and the, the people watching secretly uh, believed that they were training their kids to carry out school shootings. Oh, geez. Um, and that they were, uh, um, they were radicalized and uh, they had ties internationally to Saudi Arabia and uh, there was some real serious stuff going Holy on. Uh, they've been convicted now and they'll be sentenced in March, but that was walking around that compound and not really knowing what we were seeing and then looking back and, and knowing what happened um, was one of the craziest stories and that was a big one experiences of my life what, what can are you allowed to talk about how the first person got tipped off that this was even um the, the taos county sheriffs put it out on facebook they said you know i mean they said that there was 11 emaciated kids it was it was a child abuse story at first um it picked up national steam when a court document said that they were training their kids to carry out school shootings were they emaciated um that is uh depends on who you ask um, that, that, is, that is what the claim was. There was uh, Facebook messages that were intercepted by the feds that said that they were uh, starving and running out of food and Either money way, and water. Either way, it was not a healthy setup. No, for I, I've opinion, just, you know. But, but, in, but interestingly, p part of the twists in that case was the fact that uh, they, were, uh, they were accused or charged with child abuse wasn't reason to hold them in jail. And well, so, yeah, because and so of probable in this state, cause, right? How did you get in there? Well, how, and how do you prove you're a danger to society yeah. if the only people that are hurt are your kids because they didn't eat? Right. And what so, a premise. And so they were, they were going to be released from jail. There was threats on the judge's life, and they had to evacuate the courthouse. This is part of the, the <laughs> weeks-long so uh, saga. Yeah, it is, uh, it is a story with many twists and turns. But anyways, it finally the feds took it over, and they're going to be sentenced uh, next, next month here in March. Wow. Um, that was by far the craziest story that I followed. That's, yeah. that's so crazy. Okay, get to the sports one now. Well, the one that comes to mind was not one that I did here. It was actually one I did in North Dakota, yeah. but it was a Daryl Strawberry. Yes, okay. um, I'll take that. The baseball guy. Yeah. But he, he, he talked about his journey to sobriety and talked a lot about like yeah. um, what he was struggling with um, in addiction and how he's trying to use his story and his power and his platform to help others with sobriety. Yeah. And I remember being a super green journalist sitting down with Daryl Strawberry <laughs> in the church basement somewhere, um, hearing his story and just going, wow, that's it's a nice guy, isn't really cool. he? Very nice. Yeah. yeah. You'd never yeah. know how, you know, of a, of a big deal he was or is yeah. uh, until you kind of, you know, look it up uh, and Mets days. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and so that's one that comes to that's mind. Neat. That, was, that was pretty I'll cool. take that. That's you a pretty big know, name. One of my least favorite things that, that I hear people sentiment or their, their assertions, they go, yeah, only in Albuquerque. And I go, that's not true. Have you ever looked at Florida? <laughs> you know, like people always say that. Well, comment Florida is so usually pretty close to that. List, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, people have these cliche things like only in Albuquerque. I'm like a car got stolen. It happens everywhere. I just kind of hate that, that sour take on like only here. And I'm like, I challenge that. I go only here. I bet you it's happened anywhere. You well, know, like this, Ryan, it's that's a sour. That's why we appreciate your outside perspective coming from the Midwest to the Southwest. Yeah. And, you know, I think you bring some you know, fresh set of eyes and, and the fact that you signed another couple year deal to stay here speaks volumes.
And before we cut out, talk a little bit more about your new yeah. new role. You said you were doing some investigative journalism to help protect some of some of the people here. Yeah, absolutely. I, so I was I was uh, anchoring the six o'clock news, uh, which was a lot of fun doing it next to Tessa Mentis, who's a great role model and a fabulous journalist. Um, and now I, I get to focus all of my time on doing longer form stories. Some of it will be investigative, looking at the, some of the problems, bigger problems with laws. HOAs. Uh, <laughs> what? You got no association. You got you got a tip. Call uh, KOB4 or, uh, or or hit us up on uh, the investigative side. But I'll also be, be getting to do those Heart of New Mexico stories. I'm working on some really cool ones, um, and I've done some really cool ones that you can check out if you go to uh, just Google Heart of New Mexico or kobcom slash Heart of New Mexico. You can see all those stories that really celebrate this place. Can they, do, do we have this information up? Can yep. we put the email back up? Just if you guys had some ideas, I think that's I think it's great to come from the Albuquerque soul and go, hey, you know what? I, I never thought about that before. Let's so email uh, or yeah, that's uh, my Instagram. But like, I'm easy to find on social media. Okay. You can you can message me, uh, reach out, whatever whatever you want. Okay, red or green chili? Uh, I'm I'm red is now starting to take over. I find that <laughs> when you when you just start living here, green is the easy okay. answer. But the more mature New Mexican palate, I think, likes <laughs> yeah. the red. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's scary. That's what so I always preach. No, yeah? red, red is for locals, green's for tourists. So I'm, I'm just now tourist, like uh, starting to appreciate red. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Red has its place on certain items. I think red's great cereal. on cereal, <laughs> cereal, and uh, <laughs> flapjacks. <laughs> That's an up north term. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. And ketchup that, and chips. And ketchup oh, chips. Uh, uh, and let's give a shout out to your Channel 4 um, peers. And oh, pundits. Gabe and Danielle. Yeah, Gabe and Danielle. Dude, sorry, man. Hey. <laughs> You're late, on late to the show. I love it. Gabe did a great piece for. <laughs> Gabe's uh, the man. On, on, Where's he? And, and it just rates, and I'd be ready to uh, do another piece, Gabe. I'm ready. Okay, bring some, that bring was a some lean life. In. Bring some life to this show. <laughs> yeah. Bring your own carpet, whatever color you want, Gabe. Future looking your, your bright. Open invite. Like our carpet. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll have links to your IG and, and how people can reach you. I think you're making a difference here, and we appreciate it. That. <laughs> There's that. That has nothing to do with Ryan, but let's get it in there. <laughs> thank you, you, Mark. You're crushing it today, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice Pomeranian shirt, uh, yeah. Ryan. Uh, stay tuned to the next segment. It's everybody's favorite as we wrap up. It's Skip Skips Rugs. Tips. Stay tuned. We're back, segment three. Um, thanks for Ryan Laughlin, Channel Four, for coming in. That was a, he was a great guest. Um, and again, check him out in this new investigative uh, story role. And uh, now we're going to go in for Skip Tip for good measure. Get it? That's right. It's Skip's Tips. Anything that saves us time, makes us more money, or allows us to have more fun in real estate or real life. Attention buyers, are you waiting for lower mortgage rates? Guess what? So is everyone else. Buying a home in a higher interest rate climate can be very scary, but did you know sellers are willing to make more concessions and you'll have less buyer competition, meaning better prices and better deals when shopping for your home. Don't be scared to take on a higher rate. Keep in mind, as soon as those rates go down, multiple buyers are coming back into the market, making prices go up and up and up. So take a chance, see if you can get some savings or a better deal when the climate is in a higher interest rate market. Share this with a friend and tell them Skip said so. All right, that was, that was good information. And again, I hate this cliche saying in, in the industry, but I'll do it. Marry the house, date the rate. I'm right. dating that rate hard yeah. right now. Yeah, so can hard. I tell you a joke? Yeah. Okay. Um, what did Spartacus say when a lion ate his wife? I'm glad he ate her. Gladiator. Uh, every Wednesday night, Sunday morning here on the Education Channel or worldwide on Spotify and YouTube. Da, 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 da. This da. is all about you, ABQ. Nice rug, eh?